um, morning or good afternoon or good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Uh, today, I, I'm going to try to get through the whole thing. If not, it'll be another couple of series, but here's the truth, okay? Revelation 20, um, a thousand year reign is Achilleism. Chapter 20 is the only place in the Bible where most come up with the thousand year reign after all this is over with. This was not the belief of the church for 1800 years after the death of Christ. Jesus came. Jesus only has two epiphanies come from the word epi, phenos. Epi means Phineos means to superimpose a shining or coming or presence. The Bible only teaches two. Bible teaches his first coming as a baby in a manger. Then it teaches his second coming at the end of time. Now there are so many false doctrines, so many. Revelation 20, a thousand year reign, is a uh, Kiliism. Chapter 20 is the only place in the Bible where most come up with this thousand year reign after all this is all over with. So, uh, the preacher of rapture seven years before the end of time. The seven year tribulation is for Jews and there are going to be 144,000 Jews that preach the gospel. The 144,000 is 12,000 times 12 is 144,000. 12 is the church. 12 is the number of the Old Testament Israel. 12 apostles. 12 tribes of Israel. 12 is the number of the completion the complete church, the Bible tells us this in the sixth chapter of John, where after Jesus fed the 5,000, five loaves, two fishes, 12 baskets full were taken up so none would be lost. The Bible tells us in chapter 14 of Revelation what the 144,000 are. The Bible says, these being the first fruits sorry. <laughs> the first fruit of the body was the priesthood. And, um, the priesthood, the first born in the old Testament. And instead of the first born, God substituted the first born Levi, Levi for the first born, the Levites became the priesthood, but the new Testament that we have been, um, predestined to the image of his son, that we be the firstborn among many brethren who, or we be the first fruits. 144,000 is the church just like the priest in the king and the two witnesses in the church. The two witnesses are the two olive trees that stand behind the Lord of the whole earth. There is no pre-trib rapture. It's completely false. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15.52 At the last trumpet. It has to be the last trumpet. That's the time frame factor. Last Escalatos, eschatology, means study of end times. Eschatos is the last in a series after where there is no other. Phanit, end. Another word, it's the last trumpet, which after no other trumpet will sound. Seven trumpets in Revelation 8 chapter, Revelation 9 chapter, and the seventh one sounds on Revelation 10, 7. Time is no more, and the mystery of God is finished. And then Revelation eleven fifteen, when the seventh trumpet sounds, all the kingdoms of this world are conquered by God, and never again will any kingdom rise up against him. Yes, I wrote this all down by hand. I study it. He tells me where to go and what to do. And the last kingdom, last enemy, see, it's all on here. 
And the last kingdom, last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Philippians 3.21, the same operation that changes our bodies, he will now not destroy, he will now destroy all his enemies that comes at the end of time, at the last trumpet. No pre, pre-trib rapture. There's no such thing. It's made up. There's no such thing. First of all, these pre-trib people, okay, they say, will be dying all the way through the tribulation. Now, how can God destroy death, his last enemy, by the same operation that he changes our bodies? How? If people are going to be dying after the operation, that changes us. When it's over with it, it's false and it's not true. From Jesus, some where about Jesus' time until the end of time, forget this pre-trib rapture. It is false. Get Please, people, it's false. If you don't prepare yourself to endure to the end, you're going to faint and you're not going to be able to survive. The false doctrines, the pre-trib arguments say, well, God wouldn't let his bride, his church, go through tribulation. But what they're really saying is, Um, God wouldn't hurt his bride in America. Yeah, they're just talking about themselves in America. Not caring about that God's children are all over the world. The church has been crucified in China, okay? In Africa, okay? In South America, they have lived in persecution and have been dying by the millions long before the last seven years of time. So what do they mean God wouldn't put his church through through that? What do they mean? They mean only in America. It does not matter about the body, whether the body is beat up or not. The church is not the physical body we live in. That's the outer man. The church is the inner man. Christ in you. That's the truth fact. Revelations 20 The thousand years, it's not a thousand years. It's the word kilia, like I said yesterday. Uh, It's plural. We believe it's 2,000 years or more. And in in this case, 2,000, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000 among the mysteries of the ancient world, they studied numbers. These are all forms of the same number. Multiples of 10 are forms of the same number to those people in the ancient world. And the one war, not a number, and the one was not a number, according to um, Lakithio theology, <laughs> which is uh, uh, in the dictionary for mathematics. Okay, so I had to look that up. One is not a number. One, one was a generator of numbers. They did not start counting until they got to two. Two was plural. So when you see Kilia, uh, Kilia, it is plural, 2,000 or more. So when you see this in chapter 20, verse 1, I saw an angel come to from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hands, Revelation 22, and he, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. It should read 2,000 years. Bound him 2,000 years, uh, D-O him for 2,000 years, D-O is bound, uh, the word means bind, in the law of binding and loosening. Bind is D-O, loose is Luo. If you notice, Satan is going to be bound, and then he's going to be loose for a season. Bound, D-O, means to forbid, also unlawful. Satan is going to be forbidden from doing something, in verse 3, says he's going to be forbidden from deceiving the nations. Nation in the word ethesinos, we get ethnic, it means 
non-Jew. The only people Satan is going to be forbidden from deceiving is are the non-Jews. So their 2,000-year period, this applies to the church, they're going to be a Gentile church. That Satan is going to be forbidden from deceiving. Where did this 1,000-year reign after this all over with come from? Well, I'm going to tell you what I found. Oh, my arm. Um, in the same operation is going to change our bodies that destroys all of Christ's enemies and the people who believe in a thousand year reign they say that people are going to live out of this tribulation to live into the thousand years and they're going to live two to three hundred years old and die up here that that's how that how could how then how could death be conquered at our change not only if there was a pre-trib rapture he wouldn't conquer death by the same operation that changes our bodies they say the people going to die all the way through and at the end of the thousand years satan is going to come out and attack but the Bible says God's enemies will be destroyed, including Satan, at the end of this 2,000 years. Yes, I'm putting in the 2,000 years because they changed, they, they, they you know, people wrote this. But let me, I'll get to that. So where did the 1,000-year reign come from? These people that believe this, according to Augustine, this is started back and it had a Jewish stamp on it. The Jews back in the ancient world wanted their own thousand years. The man that believed this were considered a cult. Okay, the men that believed this. Uh, the, the, the men that believed that the, the thousand years and put this in, they were considered an occult. Okay. Uh, to some degree in the early church, and they were called Kiliasts or Millenarians. Millennium comes from mill, and Ananin, a thousand years, is the wrong translation. The term signifies a period of a thousand years, and its religious years is applied to the prophetic error mentioned in Revelation 21.7. The millenarian or Kiliots in ancient and modern time are characterized by their um, tenant respecting the second advent of Christ, which they believe will be accompanied by the resurrection of the martyrs and saints who will reign with him on earth in a state of blessedness and rest for a thousand years when the resurrection of the wicked will occur together with the final judgment and its eternal rewards. This doctrine is generally attributed to Jewish, Jewish origin. Josephus says of the Pharisees that they had to hold to the confinement of the souls of the wicked in an everlasting prison that righteousness, the righteous, have power to revive and live again. It's his, tr it's his true that the Kilius doctrine where at Ju uh, were wears a Judaic stamp and rose in some degree from Judaic influences. It comes out of Judaism. Tertullian advocated the same doctrine notwithstanding. However, the extensive spreading of the mille mille millenarians, okay, um, tenant, it would be a rash that it, it was universal or accepted as the creed of church. They're saying it was not accepted as the early creed of the church. It was the Jews who wanted their own little separate kingdom. Augustine wrote, uh, Augustine's treatment of this subject marks an epic 
he said that he had one held to a millenarian Sabbath like you have 6,000 years. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you have a seventh thousand year because they say it's the Sabbath. Well, that came after the Sabbath. The point is the Sabbath will be an eternal Sabbath. That will be the seventh day. It will it will be a never-ending day, like the song says, an unclouded day. Augustine said he once held to a millenarian Sabbath, nor does he consider the doctrine of the objectional provided the joys of the righteous are figured as spiritual, but proceeding to discuss the subject, he advocates the proposition that the earthly kingdom of Christ is the church, which was even then in the millennial error. Augustine said that it was the church was going on back here in the fourth century when he lived. And that is what's going back then. I'm telling you about the millennium is what the church preached. The division is they say it's a thousand years. It's 2,000 years. It's plural. When you study the etiomology, the... Um, and they did not do that. The translators did not, didn't bother to do that. Augustine says the kingdom of Christ is the church, which was even then in the millennium error and on the road to a glorious descendancy over all its enemies. From the Kittily's uh, Dictionary, they say more or less the same thing. Obviously, the idea of Cosmic Week or the 7,000 years lies behind many theories on this view. The, the world will last for 7,000 years. He says that's what some people believe. While the 7,000 years of the cosmic week corresponds to the seven days of the week of creation and eternal life, elsewhere in the world is to last 6,000 years. Thus, it was taught in the schools of Elias that the world would last 6,000 years. It was taught in the school of Elias that 2,000 without the law or without the Torah, 2,000 without no law. And then 2,000 with the Torah, or with the law, and 2,000 as the age of the Messiah. The age of the Messiah is the Messiah's kingdom. Here's what the millennials or the Kilius believe. They believe that the kingdom of God is the church, and that the kingdom of heaven is the thousand years after this, all over the ama amazing thing. They have not bothered to find out what kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven is. They just don't bother to research this. And I don't know how any pastors or anybody has not done this. And I'm telling you, it's, it, it's mind boggling. All one has to do is read some more famous writers uh, or study the McLennicans strong. Okay. So, uh, opens up to the kingdom of God. It says, Here's what they believe that the church age, here's what be they believe that the church age, that is the kingdom of God, and then they believe the thousand years, that's the kingdom of heaven. They're only, there's only one problem with that. So first, let's look at the Bible, and then look at the McLennican Strong. If I'm saying that wrong, it's because I can't read my own writing, but I have it here. Chapter 5 in Matthew, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Is, present tense, right now, it's the kingdom of heaven. And in Luke, chapter 6, verse 20 and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Matthew says, Heaven, Luke says God. That is because kingdom of God and heaven and kingdom of kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are one in the same. Every scholar writer, writer will tell you that. Every scholar writer, writer will tell you that. When you look up kingdom of God, they're trying to put a millennium 
and make it a separate and call that the kingdom of heaven. No, the kingdom of God are of heaven. The reason they blotted that out, they didn't want to bring about 200 years BC, the rabbis of Babylon, they began to blot out the word God, kingdom of God, and put heaven because they did not want to bring reproach upon that holy name. What is called the kingdom of God is, it, it was Israel. Israel is the kingdom of God. When you look at 1 Samuel chapter 12, why they call it kingdom of God after Israel has their great battle, after Saul has the first great battle with um, no, no posh, um, who is the king of the Am- Ammonites, after he fights him, the scripture, people begin to ask for a king in verse 12. Ishmael tw- uh, 12, 12, and when you saw that Nat- Nahash, the king of the children of Ammon, came against you, you, ye said unto me, Nay, but a king shall reign over us when the Lord your God was your king. God was already king. Why would they call a kingdom where God reigned kingdom of God? They wouldn't. Um, so, uh, in, this, in the... McLenical strong again, the kingdom of God or heaven in the New Testament, the phrase is kingdom of God, kingdom of Christ, kingdom of Christ and God kingdom of David as the ancestor in the type of the in the Messiah, the kingdom of heaven are all synonymous and signify the divine spirituality kingdom, the glory that the glorious reign of the Messiah is Christ reigning right now. He's reigning right now, right now as we speak. Alfred Edersheim's Life and Times writes this, Jesus the Messiah, according to the rabbinic views, rabbinic rabbinic views of the time, terms kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, kingdom of Jehovah, were equivalent. In fact, the word heaven was very often used instead of God, so as to avoid unduly familiarizing the ear with the sacred name thus probably accounts for the exclusive use of the expression kingdom of heaven in the gospel by saying Matthew the term imply a contrast to the earth as the expression the kingdom of God did to this world. They're saying kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven are are one and the same. If the kingdom of God is here now, then the so-called millennium is here now, isn't it? It is. In it certainly is. Okay, so now do we uh, we get to the kingdom of God by binding of Satan? The kingdom of God comes from the binding of Satan. Revelation 20, he's bound for 2,000 years, not 1,000 years. Matthew chapter 12. Here, he, here is how the kingdom of God comes to us. Verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. What is the Holy Spirit? The truth. John 14 15, 16, John 15, 26, John 16, the Spirit is the truth. The Holy Spirit is only truth. It can't lie. It's the Lord. If I cast out Daemon, which is, uh, means, uh, distribute fortunes, no such thing as demons. Deamon, and that's self. And when Jesus rebuked the man with the unclean spirit, he rebuked otoi. In the first chapter of Mark, that means self. He rebuked him masculine gender, singular. That was this 
So when God gets rid of singular, he rebuked the man, not them. The kingdom of God comes at the binding of Satan. That's what the 20th chapter of Revelation says. Satan is bound for the kingdom of God or for the thousand years, which I'm, we're saying it's the 2,000 years. Here's the binding of Satan. Matthew 12, 29 or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Speaking of the casting out of the devil's daemon self, one. First bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house at, at one time. Satan himself lived and now has bound in Matthew 8, uh, and these words are an allegory. They are figures. They are not literal in every case. You can't take the words literally because they didn't translate them correctly. He will spoil his house at one time. Satan himself lived in us, and now he's bound. Matthew 8. Here's how the kingdom comes. Speaking of devil, daemon. Matthew eight sixteen. When the... Spirit comes, they brought unto him many that were possessed with Daemon, devils, self, one, singular. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. He cast out with his word. They, the word is truth. Luke 11, verse 20, here's how the kingdom of God comes to us. The same is with Matthew 12, chapter 12. If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, self, one, singular, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you. Well, that's the church, the spiritual Israel. Israel was called the kingdom of God, and now Israel is spiritual. The Jew is spiritual. You cast out devils, and what does God do with his finger? In the ninth chapter of Deuteronomy, he wrote on tables of stone. 2 Corinthians third chapter, now he writes on the fleshly tables of our hearts. The 8th chapter of Hebrews, he writes upon our hearts. The 10th chapter of Hebrews says he writes the law upon our hearts. That's when the kingdom of God is coming to us. That's why it's here right now. The, king, the kingdom is now and the king reigns within us. What's the king of the kingdom of God? Christ in us. Luke 17, chapter verse 20, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom God should come, what, I mean, and when he was, hold on, stop, Maya. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of, the kingdom of, cometh not with observation. That does away with the millennium. After this is all over, because that word observation means it's not something you're going to see, okay, anymore. It means ocular, observance, something you can see with the eye. That's not the way the kingdom of God will come. If you could see it down here, then this verse would not be true. 1721, neither shall they say, lo here, lo there, behold, the kingdom of God is within you, within us. He's saying it will not be a descendant of David riding over across a drawbridge out of a literal Jerusalem with a big wall around it, moat again around it with conquering armies and someone conquering, uh, ca carrying the shield of David, going before armies. He said that's not the way the kingdom of God will come. Notice what he says. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's the original text, is the, not is. The, for, so, be, for, so the original text is, for behold, the kingdom of, the kingdom, 
The God is within you. The word within can also mean among because he's telling all the unbelievers, um, the Pharisees, it will be in us among them. Hebrews 1 and 8, Bible says we are kings and priests because God says he lives within us. Hebrews 1 8, this is how we rule. But unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. The throne of God is our hearts. In the Old Testament, it was the Ark of the Covenant outside the holy place and the outer part here God sat on the Ark of the Covenant. That was his throne. The law was written on tables of stone kept inside the Ark of the Covenant. Now the law is written on fleshly tables upon our hearts and rules. That's the king in us. The scepter, the word rabdos, it means something you rule with a ruling rod. Scepter of righteousness is equity, means what is right. It comes from you, and tithamame means to level when we bow to the will of God. That's how we rule in the kingdom. We bow to the will of God. What we're doing is telling others, we have to bow, you have to bow. Scepter is the same word in Revelation chapter 2 when he is speaking to the church of Thyateria. Verse 22, 26, And he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. We will rule the nations of the world, not in the future. Now, do we rule them a scepter of righteousness? In Revelation 2.27, And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So the word overcometh means nikavo, I mean nikaio, and nike means victory. So how we rule is victory. Nikaio is the verb word for victory. And what is the victory that overcomes the world? Our faith. So we are in the kingdom now. In Colossians chapter 127, to whom God would make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Who were the Gentiles? The church, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What is Christ, the King of Israel? We are spiritual Israel. If Israel is the kingdom of God, then that's us. John 4, 16, the king is in us, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may be able, that he may abide with you forever. John 14, 17, even the spirit of the truth that the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him not. But ye know him, for he dwelleth within you and shall be in you. John fourteen eighteen. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How does Christ come to us? The form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is truth. That's the king in us. John fourteen nineteen. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Fourteen twenty. At that day ye shall know that I am my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. John fourteen twenty one. He that hath my commandments. Okay, and I'm going to leave that and, and stop there for the next video. Um, there's really no, you know, there's a lot more I'm going to have. But brothers and sisters, this is the truth. This is the truth. So that the, the millennium is now. 
Um, it's not a thousand years, it's two thousand years uh, learning from the way they did numbers in the ancient times. And that's how, it, it, going back to all the verses, like I said yesterday, they all connect and they all prove each other right. But like I said, you know, the translators didn't make some, of they blotted some things out. So pray, I love you all. Welcome, welcome to my new subscribers Mwah! all over the globe. I love you. We may not speak the same language, but we all speak the language of love, and I love all of you, okay? So God willing, this little Italian girl will be back uh, tomorrow or later. Uh, I'm going to do what, what, however long it takes for me to finish my research I will continue them. So this is part one of the truth. God be with you. Ciao.